Hey, good morning students. Uh, today we're going to be looking at geometric sequences and series. Hope you guys are ready for this. Um, if you looked over the materials the last two weeks, uh, this should be familiar, but let's get started. Um, you already know what sequences and series are, and so we're going to continue on. If I can be in the right spot. Let's see. There we go. So our learning targets for today is how to identify our geometric sequence and find the value of a term. Okay, so just like before, we want to be able to ca calculate specific terms uh, when needed. Um, we also want to be able to make sure we're working with the geometric sequence because, again, sometimes you're not told what the sequence is or what type it is, but you have to figure that out. Um, how do we write an explicit and recursive form for a geometric sequence? Okay, those are going to be a little bit different because geometric has a different behavior. Um, it progresses according to a common ratio, which we'll see in a little bit. So it's not going to be uh, quite the same as an arithmetic sequence. It's going to have a different looking formula. And how do we find the sum of a geometric series? Okay, for those we have finite sums and we also have infinite sums. So let's get started on these and we'll see how we're doing. Uh, let's see, what is a geometric sequence? This is the definition here. Um, I, geometric sequence is a common ratio or it has a common ratio. So it's a progression of numbers that if you look at the first and second term for instance and you take the second term and divide it by the first and you do the third term divided by the second the fourth term divided by the third you should see a common ratio okay that's similar to what we do with arithmetic sequences um, they progressed according to a common difference so there we were taking the difference of two terms here we're taking the ratio of two terms so you're actually dividing them the formula here for a term in a geometric sequence is a sub n equals to a times r to the power of n minus 1. That n is our term number. a represents a specific term, and n just tells us which one. a itself on the right-hand side is actually the first term of the sequence. And that first term is important, because if I was talking about a specific Sequence. Hold on one second. Oh. All right, guys, I'm back. <laughs> Sorry it uh took a little bit. Um, I hope this is going to continue recording because I'm going to have to do it all over again. But uh, that was my daughter calling, and uh, I hadn't talked to her for days. Uh, she actually had to renew her uh, smart talk or straight talk, no, straight talk uh, card. So anyways, uh, I was able to talk with her just now, and that was nice hearing her voice again because she's at her mama's. But um, right here, geometric sequence, uh, we were just talking about that. We said A on the right-hand side was our uh, first term in the sequence. That R is the common ratio. So again, just like any other ones, we're going to divide second by first, third by second, etc., etc., and make sure that there is a common ratio. If it's not common, it's not geometric. Okay, so make sure you check everything. All right, and we're going to do that in just a second here. So this one says how to identify a geometric sequence, and I'm going to switch over to the whiteboard here. Um, how do we do that? Okay, it says. Uh, I have a sequence given, it's 3, 6, 12, 24, and 48. So again, what I was saying is you want to check all of these, okay? So if I look between 3 and 6, um, I can see, and I'm going to do this in two different colors, okay? So we're going to go 3 to 6, and I could say plus 3, right? But when I go over to here and I say that's plus 6, ooh -wee. we'll call that a YouTube fail, okay? That is not arithmetic. Okay, so because of that, we know we're dealing 
with a different type sequence. And the next one I would check would be your geometric sequence. So we're going to look at this and say, okay, well, since the arithmetic didn't work, we're going to try 6 divided by 3. So I'll write that out, 6 divided by 3, and that is equal to 2. Okay. And then we're going to go to the next one, and that is 12 divided by 6. All right. And we see that is also equal to 2. And here we're doing 24 divided by 12. Mm. Sad, sad, sad. 24 divided by 12. <laughs> that is equal to 2 as well. And remember, just because you got three twos, you got to get them all. Okay. So here we go again. We're going to do 48 divided by 24. Okay. And we also get a 2. So because we have 2 as a ratio of each pair of terms that we looked at, then we know that we have a common ratio. Okay. So we know our ratio is common. And therefore, this is a geometric sequence. All right. We have a geometric sequence, all right? And let's go back to our next one, all right? So our next slide is how do we calculate the nth term, okay? We want to be able to calculate a specific term, and we have our definition of geometric uh, sequence over here. So we're going to look at how to use that formula to find the 25th term of this sequence. Okay, and we'll see if we can do this. <laughs> Might need a calculator, guys. So we'll see how we're going to deal with that. Um, so we're going to switch back over here, and I am going to trash what's on the screen right now. And we're going to import our next slide. Okay. And this is it right here. We'll make that bigger. All right. So what are we going to do, guys? We're going to look at this, and we have our formula, a sub n, and there's two things that we need. We need n, and because they're asking for the 25th term, then we know n is equal to 25, okay? So that's given. We also need our first term, a, okay? So our a value is actually sitting right here. Okay, that's the first term in the sequence. So we're going to write down that our A is equal to, ooh, <laughs> my mind's still on 25. So A is equal to 3. And we need our common ratio, guys. Okay, and a while ago, if you'll notice, this is the same sequence. I did that to make the recording a little bit easier. And so we don't have to keep recalculating over and over. So in this case, we, again, go through each of these pairs. 6 divided by 3 is 2. 12 divided by 6 is 2, etc. And we have found earlier that our common ratio is 2. All right. So now we grab our formula over here. Okay. So our formula right here. Okay. We're going to grab that formula and we're going to write out our um, solution. So a sub 25. So we're looking to calculate the 25th term. Our first term is given to be 3. So we're going to substitute for a. And my r value is 2. And then I have an n minus 1 on top. Okay. Um, so we're going to do 25 minus 1. And so a sub 25, I'm going to move over here in case I gave you a really big number here. So we're going to move over here and we're going to calculate 3 times 2 to the 24th power. Okay. So <laughs> we can actually do that on Google. 
So let's switch back to the browser. Actually, let me switch to. Ooh, that's a pain because I'm presenting off one browser. So let me switch back here, and we're gonna go with Brave over here. So let this open up real quick, or maybe not so quick. All right. So whatever that is, we're going to do Desmos.com. So we're going to do our graphing calculator and our calculation, if you recall, is we're doing three times two raised to the 24th power. And there is your answer right there. It is 50,331,648. So it is a sub 25 is equal to 50,331,000. Is my memory failing me? And 648. Okay. And we're going to box in our answer. Okay. And that's a pretty big number, guys. So, again, when you're computing these, I promise you, you do not want to sit here and keep writing out the next term, the next term, the next term, the next term. Times three, times three. No, I'm sorry, times two, our common ratio. Times two, times two, times two. That is going to take forever. That's why we use the formula. Okay, so you're going to want to make sure you know this formula. All right? So let's move on to our next slide. Well, let me get back to the slideshow. And we'll pull up the next one. So we want the recursive form for a geometric sequence. And here you have the formula. It's a sub n equals to a sub n minus 1 times r. Okay, so that's actually not too bad. And that's where we get our times 2 times 2 times 2. So here you do 3 times 2 to get 6, 6 times 2 to get 12, 12 times 2 to get 24. So writing this formula out is going to be just as easy as doing it for the arithmetic. But instead of adding a common difference, you're going to be multiplying the common ratio. So easy, right? So let's switch back over. <laughs> Wrong one. Uh, there we go. And I'm going to trash what's on here. And we're going to pull up the next uh, import. Slide five, I think it's slide six now. And so when we write this out, ooh, it didn't let go. There we go. So we have again our same uh, thing. We know our common ratio already. So our common ratio, R, is equal to two. We found that earlier. And the recursive formula is a sub n equals a sub n minus 1 times r. And I can actually bring that r and multiply it on the front side, which will look nicer when we actually write it. So this is a sub n equal to 2 times a sub n minus 1. And you can box that in. Now, guys... We said on arithmetic that I could also write this as a sub n plus 1 is equal to 2 times a sub n. And we can do that with geometric also. It's the exact same thing. Okay. So however you prefer to write that, I'm going to leave that up to you. But if you see it either way on a multiple choice, uh, quiz, test, assignment, whatever, then realize these are the same thing. They're exactly the same. Okay, so let's move on. Uh, here we go. We got recursive form of a geometric sequence. And now I want you guys to try it. Okay, so you're going to try and work out this problem. You can pause the video, and when you're done showing your work on your paper, I want you to hit play again, and we'll see how you did. Okay, but you're given this sequence. And you need to write the explicit form of the equation, then write the recursive form, and then write out the 15th term, okay?
So let's pause right now and you give it a shot and see how you do. All right. Good luck. All right, guys, I hope you did well on yours. <laughs> I'm not sure. Is it slide eight now? Yes. All right. So here we go. Let's see how we're going to do this. So we have a sequence here. And guys, I can already tell you, if I do 36 minus 18, that is 18. 18 minus 9 is 9. Uh, this is not, not arithmetic. So we know we're dealing with something else. So we're going to look at going from 72 to 36. And 36 divided by 72, I think if you work that out, you'll find that is equal to 1 half. And here, if I go from 36 to 18, and I take the ratio, I again get 1 half. And 18 to 9, if I do 9 divided by 18, I also get 1 half. So therefore, our common ratio R because I know this is geometric now, it is a geometric sequence, my R is equal to one half, all right? Now, if I'm gonna write the explicit form of the equation, I also need to know my first term, and that is equal to 72, okay? So we have 72, and I don't need my N because we're writing the explicit form, so no, no N yet. That's actually coming up on part C. So we're going to write A sub N is equal to 72. And you're like, wait a second. What are you doing? I'm using our formula. Do you recall it? Is A sub N equal to A, the first term, times R to the N minus 1. Okay. And I didn't say this a while ago, but some of you may be thinking, well, why does that R have an N minus 1 on it? Why can't it just be R to the N? Well, think about it. If I plug in N minus 1, if I plug in N equal to 1, here, N minus 1, if N equals 1, it gives me 1 minus 1, which is 0. Now, I know R to the power of 0 is equal to 1, and I want that on the first term because 1 times A, which is the first term, gives me the first term, okay? If this were just an N up top, you would actually get the second term, okay? If I plugged in N equal to one. So that is why that N minus one has to be there. So right now, you got 72 times, and this is gonna be R, which is one half, and we're gonna put that in parentheses and raise it to the n minus 1 power. So there is your explicit form. <laughs> oh my goodness. Sorry guys. My hand is actually going numb holding this. Um, the recursive form. Okay. How do we write the recursive form? We said that. <laughs> how did I do that? <laughs> this is kind of fun, y'all. <laughs> so... <laughs> I can select the pen. The recursive form, uh, we're going to put a sub n is equal to uh, r times a sub n minus 1. Okay? And that gives us a sub n is equal to our r is 1 half times a sub n minus 1. Okay? So it's really as easy as that, guys. It is just take the previous term and multiply by your common ratio, okay? Now the 15th term, we're gonna go back and pull our explicit form of the equation, and that's gonna be easy because you've already got it written out. You just have to say, hey, I want to evaluate the explicit form at n equal to 15, okay? So we're gonna take a sub 15, I'm gonna write this out, is equal to 72 is the first term a times one half raised to the n minus one, well that's 15 minus one. 
okay? And can we do that on Google? And I'm gonna say yes, because my hand is not. <laughs> Let's go back to Desmos, and I'm gonna X that off, and we're gonna say 72 times one half, Hit the right arrow to get back out of the bottom part of the fraction. Raise it to the exponent. And I'm not sure, but I think I'm going to put this in parentheses. Because I'm going to do 15 minus 1. And there you have it, guys. All right. It is a decimal. Okay. It is a pretty big decimal. So if you want to write the decimal form, we're going to do that. Okay, but I think we can write it as a fraction, but let's see. We got 0 0.00439. So 0 0.00439. And okay. Yeah, some change. But anyways, let's say I write this out, guys. If I have this as 72, this is the same as 1 to the 14th power divided by 2 to the 14th power. So this is going to be 72 on top. And 2 to the 14th power, I don't know what that is. Let's see. 2 raised to the 14th power. That is 16,384. So 16,384. Big numbers, but again, if I want to keep it, you know, and that's what I'm going to do. Now, I can simplify this. Um, not sure how. I'm looking at this, and I'm thinking, mm, is it divisible by 4? So I'm going to take that uh, and see if it's divisible by 4. And it is. So what's 72 divided by 4? And I get 18. So I can reduce this fraction to 18 divided by 4,096. Now guys, if you're on your TI calculator, you can reduce this fraction by just typing 72 divided by 16,384. Or actually, you get your decimal and convert it back to a fraction. So either way, but if I don't have that, I'm doing this by hand, uh, then I'm going to do this again. Um, I want to see if 4,096 is divisible by let's say nine no eight it's divisible by eight eighteen is not divisible by eight okay so i'm just gonna say hey let's say divided by two again and that's gonna be 2048 so i get nine divided by 2048 and I don't think 2048 is going to be divisible by 3, but I could be wrong, so I'm going to check that. 3, it is not. So therefore, my reduced fraction is 9 divided by, that really doesn't look like a 9, but it is, 9 divided by 2048. And there you go. The decimal is nice, but we had to... Uh, round it. Okay, if I want the exact answer, I'd really like to keep that as a fraction. And sometimes having the exact answer is better. And so again, you use your better judgment. Um, so anyways, let's move on. Um, get back to our slideshow. So here, uh, we just explained that one. Now we want to start looking at sums. We want to turn our attention to finite sums of geometric series. And here you have a geometric series with a common and yes that has a typo. It is C-O-M-M-O-N. So a common ratio R and a first term A. So we know what our nth term is. That's just A sub N equals the same formula guys. But if I sum up the first n number of terms, okay, then it actually has a value of a times r to the n minus 1 divided by the quantity r minus 1, okay? So that's the formula we're going to use, okay? So let's look at an example of that. 
And here I'll put the formula over on the right so we can review back or look back at it. And we're going to look at this particular uh, sequence again. And so let me switch this back. And we're going to clear this off. And we're going to import. And I think we're on slide 10, if I'm not mistaken. Yes. So here we go. And I'm going to switch the PMS degree this time. So we already know for our sequence that we've been doing that R is equal to one half. Okay. We found that we know our A value is equal to 72 from earlier. But guys, when we talk about a series, again, that's written differently than what I have here. So I said find the sum of the first 15 terms, but I didn't write it as a series yet. Um, so anyways, you're actually looking at 72 plus 36 plus 18 plus 9 and on and on and on up to A sub 15 plus A sub 15. Okay, now we don't know what a sub 15 is. Okay, do I need to calculate it? Well, that's where you go to the formula, formula and you look at it. I'm asked to know the first term of the sequence. I'm asked to know the common ratio. And I'm asked to know the term number in, but there is no mention of the 15th term. Now that's different for an arithmetic series. We had to know the first term and the last term in our series. In this case, we don't have to calculate a sub 15. All we need to know is the first term a, the common ratio r, and n, the term number. So that is actually an easier calculation, although algebraically it looks a little more compl complicated. And I will say on an end of course, not an end of course test, yours is NCFE. On the NCFE test, they actually give you a formula sheet. So when you're doing your work, please have this formula available. This is not one you have to memorize. And I'll tell you, I don't have it memorized. I mean, I have to go online and look it up when I need it. So, you know, that's the nature of the world we live in today. You know, we have formulas at our fingertips. So let's look at filling in the formula here. If I'm looking for S of 15, and this is a finite sum, guys, because I can count the number of terms. 15, well, that's a countable number, okay? So S of 15 is A is 72 times R, which is 1 half, raised to the 15th power. I don't know why that writes so weird sometimes, but anyways. Raised to the 15th power minus 1, and all that is divided by 1 half minus 1. Now guys, some of you may be looking at this and you're thinking, one half minus one, I'm going to get a negative number. How are we getting a negative sum? You're actually not, okay? You're not getting a negative sum. Um, if you look at this, this number, one half to the 15th power is actually less than one, and one half is less than one, so you're actually going to end up with a negative divided by a negative, okay? But what we want to do now is go back to our uh, Desmos calculator. And we can type this in. I'll try and do it, do it from memory or I'll be switching back. So let's see. I can X off all these right here because I'm done with those. And let's see. We had 72 times. And we had one half. I'm sorry, one half. Right arrow, close parentheses exponent raise it to the 15th power and do the right arrow to get back down minus one close parentheses so that's my numerator and then divide by and i'm going to still put it in parentheses right now desmo is going to let you type it in without parentheses but i'm going to tell you keep putting parentheses because when you switch back over to a ti calculator you're going to need to be putting parentheses or you you're gonna get the wrong answer okay so keep the parentheses in there and I can do one half minus one on the bottom 
And there's our sum right there, guys. And you're looking at this and you're saying, oh my gosh, that's a decimal. It's okay. Uh, we're getting 143.996. So we're going to write that down. So S of 15 is equal to 143.996. Okay. Now again, <laughs> can I go through this and actually get the exact answer? Yes. <laughs> It'll take a little bit of algebra, and I'm going to leave that for you guys to try. Um, obviously, if I have 1 over 2 to the 15th power, I would need to come here and get a common denominator to subtract these. 1 half minus, I would put 1 as 2 over 2 and get a common denominator, you know that's just going to be a negative one half on the bottom. So you can try and work through that and get the exact value. Um, how about commenting that? I'd love to see your answer for that on Google Classroom. So you can put a comment on the assignment and say, hey, I found the exact answer. And just tell me the numerator slash denominator and what it turns out to be. That'd be kind of cool. Love to see your answer on that. Um, next, next up guys, let's go back to our slides. We're looking at summing an infinite geometric series. Now when we do infinite series, I can tell you that sometimes you may get a series that diverges. That's why arithmetic series, if you do an infinite, those diverge. Um, but in the special case for geometric series, if the magnitude of my common ratio is less than one, the absolute value of r is less than one, then an infinite sum exists. If not, that sum diverges and you can't write a sum. It doesn't have a value, okay? But you must check this right here. It, mm, sorry about that. You must check this r, it has to be a magnitude less than one, and then I can apply this formula here. The formula over here on the right hand side is given in sum summation notation also, but it's A divided by 1 minus R. So again, it's easy. You only need the first term and you only need the common ratio. And then you can write your answer. So let's look at a problem involving this. So how do we find an infinite sum? Now guys, if you look at this one, what's the common ratio? I don't know what keeps dinging or binging or whatever, but <laughs> whatever. Uh, 6 plus 18 plus 54. Well, 18 progresses from 6 by a factor of 3. 3 times 6 is 18. And 3 times 18 is actually equal to 54. So we are looking at a geometric series here, okay? But our common ratio R is a value of 3, okay? Now, 3 is not less than 1. So for this particular problem, the infinite sum does not exist. Now, if you want to write DNE in all caps, you can do that. But there is no uh, sum for this. You could say it diverges. That's okay, too. Um, so let's look at the next one. And this one, we're actually going to come over here and go back to IPVO. And we're going to do clear this off, trash that. And we're going to import. And hope oh, we're on the right slide. Is it slide 12 now? Hope so. Open, please, Sesame. And we just did that one. So we're actually on the last one. Okay. So let me undo that. Not quite undo that. Let me trash that. Trash that. And delete it. Well, it doesn't want to go away. That's all right. There we go. So we're going to do the last one here. And open that. And here we go. All right. So how do we find an infinite sum? Now this one, we got 24, 12, 6, and 3. We know 12 divided by 24 is what? What's that? So I'm going from here to here. I get a common ratio of 1 half. Hmm. 
common ratio of one half. If I go from 12 to six, well six divided by 12 is equal to what? That's also equal to one half. <sighs> Having fun, my hand is numb y'all, I'm so sorry. But six, three divided by six is also equal to one half. So we have a common ratio of one half, okay? So we're doing pretty good. We know it's geometric. It is a geometric series. We know our first term here, A, is equal to 24, okay? And we know that our infinite sum is equal to A divided by one minus R. You're like, did he do that right? <laughs> I'm going to double check just so I don't tell you wrong. Um, can I back this up? Yeah, A divided by 1 minus R. That is our infinite geometric series. So all I do is substitute what I just found. A is equal to 24. R is equal to 1 half. So I get 1 minus 1 half. That's a sloppy 1. And I get 24 divided by one half because one minus one half is just one half now i hope you guys know the rule okay to divide by a fraction is the same thing as multiplying by its reciprocal so i can change this to a multiply and flip the one half as two over one and we end up with two times 24 and i'm gonna write that down here so our infinite sum is 2 times 24, which is actually 48, okay? And then we're done. That's it, okay? It's easy, right? <laughs> I'm writing all over the screen. Ah, I forgot, IPVO does this sometimes. It will somehow grab the pen and not let go, okay? There we go. Let's get rid of all that. All right, I got rid of my box too. But y'all know there's not just an undo button, there's a redo button, so I can actually draw that back real quick. And if you didn't know that, I hope that helps. If you ever undo something, you gotta put it back. Hmm. That was my fork. My lunch is sitting here, I hadn't eaten it yet, so sorry about that. Anyways, uh, let's finish this out. Okay, so right here is our summary, guys. We're looking at sequences and series. This week we've looked at arithmetic sequences. Uh, finding the nth term is according to the formula a sub n equals a sub 1, the first term, plus n minus 1 quantity times d, the common difference. Okay. Again, arithmetic sequences progress according to a common difference. Our sum formulas is given here for our... Uh, arithmetic sequences are actually series. Uh, they are called series when you're adding them up. Our geometric sequences we saw have a formula also a sub n equals a sub 1. We saw it earlier as a but that's okay. Sometimes you'll see the 1 subscript on it. That's again just referring to the first term times the common ratio raised to the power of n minus 1. The common ratio guys again is taking the second term divided by the first third divided by second, etc. Make sure you check those before you start doing work on a sequence or a series. Make sure you know what you're dealing with, arithmetic or geometric. Then our sum formula uh, for a finite sum is given on the bottom left here. And then the infinite sum is just the first term divided by the quantity one minus r. And I hope you guys Enjoyed the lesson. <laughs> it was kind of fun with my numb hands there. That's just wonderful. hate when that happens. But anyways, I hope you uh, do well on your assignment uh, on the quizzes. So please, please, please uh, let me know uh, if you have any questions. I will be online on Google Hangouts and we can chat there if you have any further questions. Thank you very much for your attention and have a great day.